That's right. Okay. So, so Margaret, yes. um, thank you for coming today. What we want to do is talk to you about your life in Redondo Beach, and and I think what's really important too is your dad's life, because that was so much of making Redondo uh, during his term as his terms as a councilman and or a mayor. Um, and what we like to frame it in is as how you live, work, and play in Redondo Beach. So if you could start by telling us when you were born, where you were born, and when you came to Redondo Beach. Okay. I was born the first day of August, 1920. My father, my mother had three daughters. Elizabeth was nine years my senior and 20 months was the youngest of the three girls. I was the middle one. We were all born in Dallas, Texas. Unfortunately, our mother died when I was three and a half. She had pernicious anemia, Irish, Jewel McGuire. My father had three daughters to raise Fortunately, he had three sisters, and I was living with the daughter, the middle daughter, Aunt Fanny, his sister, uh, at the age of three and a half when my mother died, and my elder sister, Elizabeth, and I went to California, Los Angeles, California, on, a, on the railway. Can you imagine a 12-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old? No adult. Hmm. I think they gave her 39 or $40 to spend on food, and we went to California, just two children. One thing bad happened on that trip. It was a wonderful time, but a couple was very friendly with my sister and myself, and they said, we're going to get off. We'll go to a gift store and we'll look around and stretch our legs a little bit. There were Indians sitting cross-legged out in front of a, a, a market, a store. I don't know what it was. don't know which town it was. But unbeknownst to my sister, who was 12 years old, said, I don't know whether we should go. All right, we'll go. These two women didn't, I mean, these, this couple did not bring us aboard. The train was gone when we came out. My sister was furious. They wired ahead, and they stopped the train, and they put us on one of these, whatever it is, a train where it goes up and down like this, and it, the, a couple of workmen would put us aboard and catch up to this couple and my sister and I on, what is it called, a, a, a work... It's probably a work or a utility. Yes, yes, and it, we caught up and we finished, got off in Los Angeles. His sister was an actress in silent motion pictures. She played both as a, what do they call it, when they wore uh, swimming suits of heavy woolen. They must have weighed... She was a bathing beauty? A bathing beauty and a, a comedian that would be chased by uh, the uh, police uh, work... What, what did they call them in those days? Anyway, whatever he did that was wrong, they chased him and he would run away and they would scream and run away. But it was a silent comedy and he did play it on a couple of parts. It was a train of all things, and it was drug smugglers. Hmm. They were they were the 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 police were chasing them, and they finally were caught. I don't remember the name of it, but it was silent motion pictures. So, what year did you come to California? Would it be about 1924? 1923 and a half. I went okay. to kindergarten at Mount Washington Drive located in Mount Washington Drive in Highland Park near Pasadena for the year and then we went back to uh, back to Dallas by that time my father was doing uh, building homes in Florida a lot of 
places for sale. They it was a boom in in uh, in, uh, in Flor uh, Florida. However, a lot of them were swamps. They were underwater, and they had to get rid of the ones that t in order to build homes. I guess anyway. I was at my aunt's and lived in a different sister, Aunt Anne, and she had a couple of cousins of mine, and we stay there. But one of the, her, one of her neighbors, had no children, and they wanted very much to. Uh, they wanted to. What's the word? They wanted to raise a child? Yes, they wanted to... Adopt a child? Yeah, what is it? Adopt me. Mm -hmm. Well, my father came back and he was very... He said, I can't do it. I can't break my, my children up and would not agree to adopt me. So we stayed in Dallas until I was in the... Uh, 1928. It was just before, a couple of months before the... Uh, before the Depression started? It was more, more than that. The, uh -huh. uh, the co uh, I can't tell you why I forget okay. the name of thing, but it was the... Uh, Was there a reason that you decided to come to California? Yes, uh, my my father had mother money at that time, and he said we're going to move back to for, uh, Florida, and I said no, no, we want to go back to see our aunt Aunt, aunt Fanny in uh, Los Angeles. We want to move move back and and see them because we I, we'd been there for a year, but uh, the uh, talk. I'm sorry, but my... Was it... Um, it, it was when the... Wa was it when they had the dust storms and the dust bowls? No, it was economic. economic. When the stock market crashed? When the, that was it. The, that was it. And he did have some money, and so he brought us to California to see his sister. And we moved first to Hollywood, California. My older sister attended and graduated from Hollywood High School. She was 16 years, years old. I don't know what's with my poor memory. Anyway, she graduated at the age of 16, and she moved in with a third sister, and she went to work as a the Austin photography uh, she worked in the uh, laboratory. She did temp, tent for blue eyes and ice. Uh, she, she was tinting the um, the photographs to put on yes, that, uh, lip that color was her and first, eye color. First job, and she was sixteen, very bright. She was the smartest one of our three girls. I can tell you. Um, after a few years, when I was in the fourth grade, we moved to Redondo Beach, 1931. Uh, he had a lady friend, and she had a couple of homes, which she traded for um, it was Hillside Manor, Manor which were rentals at, called the... Uh, Hillside Manor. It was Broadway and Emerald. Uh, they're still there. In fact, I have a, an advertisement that's here. That's them. They're still there. They're, they're still on the corner. 
The only thing is, this is over a million dollars that it's for sale now. And it who was it? Who had the Hillside Manor at the time? Uh, it was part of an estate. The bit, the bank, must have uh, sold it. It was very run down, and because my father was aware of uh, recommending, he did. He painted them, and they were bought a bed and a, a, a utility so that people could rent them, live there for the summer. Uh, that was how they made their, uh, how they made money was this eight unit rentals. And they were about three months from the Redondo Horseshoe Pier. And what uh, year do you think that, did your dad buy those uh, They traded, those traded the bank for two homes that Alma, who was later, they went together for five years. Her sister and her lived in one of the units, and my younger sister and I lived with my father, 102, 102 and a half at, at South Broadway. And what year do you think you moved into those, into the Hillside Manor? Well, as of 1931, I was 11 years old. I went to uh, Central Departmental, the elementary, and uh, then 7th and 8th were known as departmental. Of the, I guess they call it a, uh, like a junior uh, school. And I attended Redondo High School through the second part of my 10th grade. Uh, that was 1928. And uh, they bought a home and we moved to Los Angeles for about two years. I graduated from manual arts. Uh, winter 1938, uh, midterm, it, it was in February. I wasn't a June, but a midterm student. Three years later, I got married. I was 28 and married a. Uh, my father would never let me. Uh, Date, but I attended a uh, Lutheran church, and he, his father was a Lutheran minister, the man that uh, I married. His name was uh, Leonard Moody. My father-in-law married us since he was a minister, and uh, I'm trying to think, where did we first? We, we first moved to Redondo in one of the units. And we lived there for about two years before it got to be wartime, probably a year before we were at war with Japan when we moved. We couldn't get gasoline, so we moved to San Gabriel for about two years uh, in the post office. He worked nights for about 20 years and was a clerk at Terminal a Annex in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. Both Linda was born in Los Angeles. My second child was Janice, and she lived there until her first birthday when we moved back to Redondo and bought a uh, rentals on Pacific Coast Highway at Knob Hill. Uh, we stayed there until the third of our children was born, David. He was such a climber. I thought he was going <laughs> to pitch out of a upstairs window. It frightened me. I said, we've got to live on the ground level. He's a climber. And we bought a home on Palos Verdes Boulevard and Prospect. My children attended Tulida and then on to uh, the departmental and Redondo Union High School. That was where Linda and Jan and David all graduated. But my husband worked in the downtown post office, the Union 
next door to the Union cha uh, sta Station in Redondo. Um, if I could take you back a yes, little bit. Yes. When you came to, uh, to live at Hillside Manor, yes. um, you went to Dar Departmental School, which was also at Emerald and Pacific Coast Highway. That's correct. Well, it was and Francisca, the next step inland from PCH. It was originally known as Elena. Yes. And so uh, when you went to school at Departmental, how many years did you go to school there? It's a two-year, seventh and eighth grades, then Redondo Union High School. Now, uh, when you went to Departmental, Yes. Um, what were the things that your parents let you do as a young young lady in Redondo Beach? They did you were not. about 11 or 12 and 13 years old. That, that's correct. They did not let me date. If I wanted uh, friends and wanted to do things with my friends, I uh, went to a church, young people's group, and the uh, at the age of 12, we had a tenant that came and would spend the summer with us. It was Reverend Kellums, Jesse Kellums, and uh, I said, I want to be baptized. I want to be a Christian. My father, he must have been being funny because I asked him, I said, I want to uh, become a Christian. I wanted to get baptized. My younger said, I'm not going to get my hair wet. And I said, yes, you are. You're going to get me. And I pushed her ahead, and we went to a submersion in the Christian church. Now, which church did you go to in Redondo Beach to be baptized? Uh, em Emerson. Uh, Reverend Emerson was the church of the first Christian church on the corner of, it was across from the Catholic church, St. James, at uh, first Christian at uh, Broadway and Vincent. Um, I want to tell you something about the how two children, I had no parent, my, the woman that later married my husband uh, worked at the same studio, photography studio in Los Angeles, and so did the elder sister who graduated from Hollywood High. So she lived with an aunt, and it was my younger sister and I. I was 20 months younger than Virginia. Especially in the summer, the things that we accomplished. We would go to the beach and swim, or hide or locate um, semi-precious stones like moonstones and shells and jasper and carnelian and uh, starts with a J. What did I say? It, anyway, it's a clean, a green stone. Jade. It wasn't jade, it was jasper. Jasper? Jasper. It had a greenish, ca greenish cast. Uh, the other things we would do is go fishing on the Horseshoe Pier. We'd go to the beach and take a coffee can and put wet sand and dig up the crab. The sand crabs? Sand crabs. Would, if I had two of them, I'd fill one, which I would sell to a fisherman on the street and got 25 cents which they w was very good bait, and we would either use it or I would sell it for 25 cents. With 25 cents, the Saturday matinee was 10 cents, one for my sister, one for myself, and the nickel was a sack of popcorn. It was a lot different. Things went further. But since I was the elder, I was the cook, I did the washing and the ironing. I cleaned, especially when we had a vacancy. I'd wash windows and clean stove and refrigerator and every other vacancy that I had. We were in the rental business of summer rentals. Um, when you, uh, what year were you born? 1920. So in 1931, when you were about 11, 11 years old. 11 years old, I moved to Redondo. So when you went, uh, the pier has always been a place where a lot of people go. It now, was indeed. What do you remember about the plunge? Well, as I remember, it was a Olympic size, warm water, salt water plunge. 
with uh, a mezzanine for parents could go down and watch everyone sim swimming, diving. It had three portion, two um, what is it when they uh, have the you could sit under the very warm water and the uh, Do they have a fountain? Two. That was what I was trying to think. It was the children's section, the very large part of the swimming section, and then the deep diving area. Mm -hmm. uh, about 50 cents to go in there. The second level, the mezzanine had um, a beauty shop, a uh, dressing room, and uh, a workout like a gymnasium. Um, that was the most fun, or swimming. On the pier, there was a merry-go-round. Merry yes. I didn't like it when they sold it and sold it to some European country. It did turn into a roller skate rink. Now that was at the Mandarin, at the Mandarin ballroom. It was really at the northernmost corner of the Horseshoe Pier. The uh, Maran Mandarin ballroom was an upstairs dance hall. Shall I tell you the one time that I disobeyed my husband, uh, not my husband, my father? Sure. I was 17, and Benny Goodman and drummer Gene Krupa was playing. And we really were living in Los Angeles then, and I was attending manual arts. And I wanted to hear Benny Goodman. My father said, no, they serve liquor there. You can't go. You have to be 21. Well, I left home before when he thought I was asleep. He wasn't at home. And I went down and listened to Benny Goodman and was enjoying watching all the people on the dance floor downstairs in the uh, mezzanine. And I felt a tap on my shoulder said, get home. He knew where I went, but it was, I thought I was old enough to make a decision, like I say, at 17. And was this I at the this Mandarin about, Ballroom? That was the Mandarin Ballroom, and I loved it. Now, when I, you were at the plunge, who taught you how to swim? I never really learned how to swim. I learned in the ocean, just sort of dog paddle and ride a wave. I could I didn't have, there weren't a lot of surf, uh, surfboards, uh, although there was a story that uh, George Freeth had been hired, a Hawaiian uh, surf, surfer had, had been hired by uh, Henry Huntington. He had a, uh, the red cars that came, came from Pasadena and came from the inner city of Los Angeles. And a lot of people came and spend their, spent their summer at, uh, with the big red cars. Mm -hmm. As I remember, it was about 50 cents. I could be mistaken. That was probably a round trip because I did go downtown and I did go as far as Pasadena. Uh, I've got to tell you another period. Like I say, my father had a passion for politics. Um, Redondo was funny. At one time, it was a fun zone. Downtown Redondo had two levels of streets. The Pacific Avenue had a 5 and 10, women's clothing, the D&D &D drug, the uh, LJ Arms, which was a hotel, and uh, a uh, rail line, like that must be where the uh, red car was. But there was also a lower one. There was a Chamber of Commerce building kind of built on a slope, and the one down below was um, the Fun Zone. They had Kino, and they had roulette, and gambling, poker, the wagon wheel restaurant that was quite popular, mm. and 
there were racketeers that ran it. My father said that we couldn't go down on the front, the fun zone, at, in the evening. We could go to the beach in the daytime and go swimming or something like that. But there were racketeers. And I went down there one time in late afternoon, probably about five o'clock, and I saw Bugsy Siegel. And I knew who he was. I'd seen pictures of him and I'd heard about them. And he was wearing a Panama hat and white buck shoes and a white linen suit with a black shirt and a white tie. And he looked like a well-dressed rat. <laughs> <laughs> he did not have a good reputation, but he was the, he took the money to wherever they took the money I also saw Mickey Cohen, and he was more or less a hitman. Those that had the gambling boat offshore were Les Brenneman, Tony Canero. I'm not sure I spelled their names right, but I read about them in the local paper. And my father would go in between. We'd go into town where they bought the house on La Salle near USC, near Exposition Park, that was the neighborhood in southwest Los Angeles. And he would pick up a kid that wanted to go surf, surfing, and he would pick up a hitchhiker and take them, and he says, well, I'm, I'm going to Redondo Beach. And they said, no, our parents don't want us to go to Redondo Beach. We'll go to, we'd like off at Hermosa. He says, why don't you want to go to Redondo? And he said, no, there's gambling in that town, and our folks don't want us to go there. Okay. When he got in politics, he got elected as a councilman. And the first visit on the city council, he stood up and said, Mr. Mayor, I want you to pass a he wasn't the only one, but he was a member of a group that was against the gambling on the front. And he said, I want you to have the chief of police, and I think it was Peterson. However, Richardson was also the police of police, uh, the police, of police in Redondo. And he said, I recommend that he, the chief of police, closed every gambling unit on the El Paseo. And they were closed. There were those that would sometime get a donation from the gamblers, but they did close that. His suggestion that they be clothed did mm -hmm. happen. What year do you think you saw Bugsy Siegel and and the others? I was about 15, so that would be 1935. And what year did your father become a councilman? Well, if he ran for mayor in this album, which is February through December of 1947, uh, he uh, was mayor. So um, when you were 11 years old, I'm going to take you back yes, again. Yes, yes. When you were about Fifth 11 grade. years, zoom it in. When you were about 11 years old and you went down to the pier. Yes. Um, do you remember the water taxis that went to the wrecks in the tango? No, it was after that. It was much later than when I was 11. I, I was in the fifth grade. Uh, Ruth Crosby was my teacher. And uh, I think that the... When they closed the gambling on there, it was probably 1935. Uh, like I say, for about a year, possibly two and a half, I had met my sweetheart. My, uh, he was six years older than mine, but graduated from manual arts. And uh, his father was a Lutheran minister. Mm -hmm. He and his father, was born in Australia. Uh, he came, my father-in-law, my future father-in-law came to Redondo and went to a seminary to 
learn to be a uh, uh, a minister. A minister, and he met an Illinois farm girl, my mother-in-law, and they moved to Perth. Well, he really was had started a Lutheran school. I mean, a church in the outback. My husband was born in. I'll see if I can remember it, and I know it well. Catanning, Western Australia. Uh, I went there and visited Australia in 2000. A son and I said, I'm 80 years old. I can't go on myself to Australia. And my son-in-law said, I will go with you and I'll see to you that we go and visit where your, where Leonard Moody was born. I'm going to say something else about my husband. My husband was into politics. He loved all kinds of, of politics. Mr. Democrat. He was a delegate to two national conventions. One when <coughs> What's his name? Keith Offer. And another, my stepmother by then was the delegate to uh, Stevenson. I know his name, but I can't, can't remember it. I can remember it when I'm working a crossword puzzle. <laughs> uh, can you tell me, what do you remember uh, um, about the boardwalk in Redonda Beach? About the boardwalk? Did you go to the boardwalk as a young girl? I would go on a walk. I, at 16, I had a summer job of being the uh, a cook. I, I say, uh, one of the men who was a... Uh, Tommy Thompson, a uh, not a yeah, a realtor. No, yeah, I guess he was a realtor, and he had a teenage son, probably fourteen or fifteen, and he said, "I will if you go and fix him his lunch, and then perhaps his dinner." So at sixteen, uh, that was a summer job. I would work to Hermosa and go home and fix a luncheon for my little sister. She would have been 13. And then I would go back and give him his, have his dinner. What do you remember? Did you ever roller skate on the bo boardwalk? Yes. And can you tell me how, yes. where it was built? Today there's a harbor it's, and no one would know that there, where the boardwalk was. The, uh, the people who had on the boardwalk, it was a uh, cement, and uh, yes, uh, you walk, you take your dog for a, a walk, but uh, uh, roller skate was fun. They didn't have the ones like we have now, where the it's a single wheels are in a row. It was the kind that you have a you had a key to put them key on your shoes. and just the shoes you went to school. It, it wasn't uh, one that, anyway, all I can say is, yes, I love to go uh, with, the, uh, with the roller skate. Now, the boardwalk used to run along the beach, yes, right next to Moonstone is. Beach. It is. And where did it start? Can you remember where it started in Redonda Beach? And did it Well, it went to uh, the Horseshoe Pier. You'd go down there. It was very popular. People, you'd go down, either you'd fish or you'd go down. There were some, uh, um, I don't know. There were restaurants around yes. the pier? Not as many as there. Well, the Horseshoe Pier burned down. I can't recall the, the name of when it burned down, but when they rebuilt it, it is cement. The, it, it, it isn't 
It was burned in 1988, Good. I believe. And I then did, no. and they changed it from wooden planking. Now, was the boardwalk made of wood, no, wood planks? No, cement. 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 And cement. Uh, when you went to the plunge, did you have your own bathing suit or did you rent one? They had them there for, I, I had my own bathing suit. Uh, my sister had a bra and two-piece bathing suits. You could be, uh, it would, the, uh, they said, no, you cannot go to Hermosa. Uh, two bra and, anyway. So you couldn't swim in Hermosa Beach if you had a two-piece bathing no, suit as a young they, lady? They, they said there, uh, I didn't have, I was just a, a, a kid. I just had a woolen, uh, what is it? Most most the uh, swimmers that are uh, starts with an M. The most uh, of the it doesn't matter anyway. Now it, was that woolen bathing suit really yes. heavy? Yes, when, when you got, got it wet, it w uh, would be. It was quite heavy. But uh, my sister, like I say, she was the one that graduated from Hollywood High School. And uh, it became, they, they said, not, Redondo, it's all right. They, they let. So I guess Redondo was a little bit more of a looser town. Correct. With gambling and the bathing but, suit that you could wear. But uh, Hermosa and maybe even Hermosa, they had stricter rules of uh, whether it was indecent. They couldn't have the two-piece bathing suits. Now, in 1931, when you were living at uh, Broadway and Emerald, where would you go to go shopping? There was a small, uh, there were four Japanese uh, brothers. They rebuilt it recently. They remodeled it, and I can't even tell you what it is now. But it was at Pacific Coast Highway or Elena, and uh, they had one was that had the meat counter. One had the um, vegetable for salads and things. One for the uh, hard. hard Hardware? Can, uh, canned goods and oh. all of the um, cereals and things like that. May it was only three. Once when we went to Hawaii, my parents, my stepmother and my father, uh, we were invited to one of the uh, men who were up there uh, on where I shopped. It was, like I say, I was 16. And... Uh, they, the the wife sold real estate. Uh, she sold lots and, and houses and so forth, and uh, they were they were very uh, they were very kind to me. I mean, it was just a small neighborhood, but uh, I'm trying to think what. Oh, I know what it was. It was Gary, and he was the. Uh, the host where we were invited. And he said, you know, I was, had a, uh, a farm where I had Kona coffee and uh, they had a tsunami and it came and washed over and they decided that they would move to Honolulu, and that time he had a a grocery store. I'm trying to recall. Anyway, something wiped out his coffee. His coffee plantation? Yes, and then when it came on the Hilo, that was the tsunami, and it came in and it washed out that, and he said to us at that time, I prayed for water to put it out, 
and then the next time it came in and washed out that, he said, I thought I wanted something to put out. Maybe it was a fire the first time, but whatever it was, he said the second time it put out that business. I can't tell you what he used his, uh, um, he prayed for something to put it out and it washed them out. And so did he eventually come to Redondo Beach? No, this was before. We knew him from when I was maybe 14, 15 along in there. But we saw him later when we were traveling. Now when you came, you went to departmental school until you were about 13. It was and, two year. And then did you move to Los Angeles? No, I went to Redondo High School in uh, the ninth, 10th, and it was the first half of the 11th year. I just graduated from Redondo. So what year did you start high school, do you think? Well, would it be about 1935? I think it was. I graduated from uh, school in 1939. And did you graduate from Redondo Union High School or from Manual Arts? Manual Arts. I started from Manual Arts. Uh, when you were at Redondo Union High School, what do you remember about the high school? I've got to tell you, this wasn't Redondo, but I think it was very interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of his first name, uh, Wilson. Um, he wanted to start a uh, manual arts was so that you could graduate and learn a... Uh, so you could own a trade, that a you could trade. learn a trade? That's, that's, that's what I was trying to think. Uh, he went back to uh, to Washington, D.C., and when I went there, they had a art department. I would have to be an art uh, exam. Uh, that's what I was interested in. Uh, they had a life art a, uh, I'm sorry, now was there a liberal arts study at yes, manual arts? Yes. Uh, so English and literature and... Well, um, the, they had a, what is it when they I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Let's they, uh, let's but, talk. But they they had everything from a uh, kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, I have a question for you. Yes. What year did you get married? 1939. And when I graduated did... in February uh, from from the. Uh, did you graduate from Manual Arts or from Redondo? Yes. From Manual from Arts. Manual Arts. And then my father-in-law was a... Uh, he was a Lutheran minister. Lutheran minister. When you came, he, what year did you come back to Redondo Beach? Hmm. The reason we went into Los Angeles was you ha had to... You had to be able to say, my son needs a place to live. You may not like this. Mm -hmm. The man who lived in the front house where my husband was raised was a retired FBI. I guess he was possibly uh, where he was afraid of his wife being somewhere else. I don't know. But uh, she would say, let me in, let me in to my mother-in-law and back. He says, he doesn't, I, I want to get away from him. And uh, whatever it was, uh, we had to go through a uh, somewhere where we could get them removed from the house so we could live there. 
uh, he wasn't too smart, and his wife was trying to get away from him. But that, that was why we went back there. We were going to live in Redondo, but we had to get rid of this woman who uh, was a little bit afraid of being shot by her husband. So they, that w they lived in Redondo Beach at uh, Broadway? They lived, they, lived, they lived on 54th between Normandy and Budlong. That's where my husband was raised. But we wanted that particular building so he would have to move away and we would move in there so that uh, that was the only way that she could get rid of them. Now, this did you was ever, wartime. Now, did you ever move into that house at 54th between Budlong yes, and... Yes, yes. We had to move there. We had to live there for one year. Actually, we lived there for two years and then we moved back to Redondo Beach where we purchased a... Uh, a rental on uh, 708 Pacific Coast Highway, and we had a four unit, and that's where we lived when we moved back to Redondo. And what year did you move back to Redondo, do you think? Oh dear, what time did we move back to Redondo? Do you remember? 47? So in 1947, you moved to 708 South Pacific Coast Highway, Correct. which Correct. is right near Knob Hill. And it Pacific Coast indeed. Highway today. It was still a. Uh, it was still a. Uh, school. There was a school, Pat South Patterson School and Patterson School there. across the street. Yes. Yes. And where did your children go to school when you moved well, back? Well, those that were still in grade school started at uh, the school. It was just down to Knob Hill, and. Uh, and I think you had perhaps moved on to Hillcrest. No? No. Pardon? Well, but honey. So when you went to school, that your children went to school at South, and how, as a young mother, did you get involved in the PTA or any groups? Uh, I was on the PTA. I had one of the... Uh, uh, members of it. I don't recall what it was at that time. It was just, uh, oh, I don't know. Sometimes we were on the committee where we would prepare the coffee and the whatever dessert we had and things such as that. Uh, there were also other, uh, I don't know what they were, but things that we did within the PTA. Now, what do you remember about the roads here in Redondo Beach? in 1947 or even in 1931. We've heard things that um, Elena was the same as Pacific Coast Highway. Correct. And that uh, was changed during uh, the uh, police times when they would move such as the, uh, what is it? The man that, the man that, uh, moved the uh, the big police to spruce goose. Spruce goose. When, the spruce goose. When Howard Hughes was... Yes, they had taken the wings off, but it was moved past, past our house, and they built the uh, Pacific Coast Highway so that it cut in and went to Long Beach. Uh, now, do you remember them bringing the spruce goose down, oh, yes. down Elena? Yes. And Pacific Coast Highway? Yes, we went out in front and watched it go past. So what can you tell me about that? What did they have to do to it move it down enormous. the street? It was enormous. It didn't look like a, uh, a school because it had the wings on it. and It that didn't look be, like an airplane? No, that, that was put on top. They had to build it somewhere else. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say that was important. When I was 80, my son-in-law made arrangements for me to go on the I, yeah the uh, Zeppelin so you went on the Goodyear blimp yes yes I did mm -hmm. oh dear I don't have it well anyway all I can tell you uh, was it was important that I got to go no I don't have it anyway um, the, uh, what? Oh, nothing. 
You're fine. <laughs> so you went on the Goodyear blimp. That's going to bring me to a question. Do you remember the Graf Zeppelin when it came to Los Angeles? Yes. Did you go to Mines Field to see yes. it? Yes. It, it was the Graf Zeppelin. And when I looked at it, I said, it looks just like... It wasn't the uh, von Hindenburg. That was in New Jersey. That's the one that was... That burned. It was a lightning, mm -hmm. the lightning, and and that was a horrible situation. Uh, Redondo was a uh, at that time. It was 1931, I th think. No, 37. It was 37 when we went there. It was a great time to see. It went around the world. It, I can't tell you where else it went, but we were at uh, Mines Field. What do you remember about it when they brought the... Uh... The thing I said was it looks just exactly like the biggest cigar in the world. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, like I say, it was about... thirty. It wasn't 37. It had to be earlier than that, maybe 37. 36, somewhere in there. All I, all I know is, I'm going to show you something else. I don't know what else you want. My father was interested in Harry Truman. Well, let's talk a little bit about your father. This is, this is uh, Congressman King. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. What year did your father... Uh, be, get into politics in Redondo Beach, probably he around. He was always interested as a Democrat. He often would say things like, "What about Redondo Beach had a terrible storm at one time, and Congressman King was the." application where we went to, uh, they built part of the, they built the break marina, wall. the marina, mm -hmm. and some of the, um, some of the waves, some of the waves, some of the 50 pound rocks would go through the second level. And it really was doing away with all the waterfront hotels, uh, uh, not hotels, waterfront homes. Right. Um, it was uh, about that time that they decided it wouldn't be with marinas, but with, uh, what did they do with them? Well, they we took know them away. what most people don't know mm -hmm. is that there were houses on a 1st through 10th Street or 14th Street yes. between Diamond and Hermosa Beach. Correct. And there were two rows of houses that were along the water and behind the boardwalk. And then behind that was, I think, Pacific. Um, Pacific. Now, do you remember those houses that used to be along the waterfront? Well, I was not connected with anyone that lived there. However, it was... We realized that they were the popular part along the mm -hmm. along the uh, along the waterfront. Waterfront. Now they built. Uh, but they eventually became marinas. Now they built the the break wall in 1939, and that was Congressman King. That's correct. And they named the harbor King Harbor after Congressman yes. King. He was a friend of my father's, by the way. And he, how did your father know him? Where did they well, meet? Do you remember? Well, he was, I believe, it was Englewood, and uh, I don't recall exactly, but they went to various. Uh, what would they call them? They would go to Democratic. Different Democratic meetings. Yes. And they met each other. Yes. Now, um, one of the things, as those houses were taken away with the storms, uh, th the beachfront started to go farther and farther inland. At one point, it was uh, it came up to the Fox Theater. It do you, did. What do you remember about the Fox Theater? 
Well, that was the most popular place of all. All the kids would go there, except eventually, sometimes there were rats there. And that sort of discouraged us. Now, what, what can you tell me about the rats? Because we've heard this from well, a lot of people. Well, all, all I can tell you was that discouraged us the most. And unless they went away somewhere while it was under production, they would have a show and all. But it was not very popular, <laughs> believe me. And eventually it was torn down. Now, do you remember anything about the waves underneath the Redondo, underneath the Redondo Fox, of hearing the waves uh, in the rocks and under the floor? I think mostly we just kind of ignored them. They would go elsewhere during the time. Not, not that they would go away completely, but they would hide during the theater. Okay. Do you ever remember sitting, the, what the rules were for the, the Fox Theater of who could go in the mezzanine and the balcony and who could stay below? No, I don't recall that. I, I never went up on the balcony. I stayed on the main level. Uh -huh. But uh, it, was, it was not a popular place to go. Now, what other, media, other movies did you go to? Did you ever go to The Strand? You know, The Strand is the one that was 10 cents. It was 10 cents. If I had $25, my sister and I would go, and then it would be... Uh, so uh, if you had 25 cents, your sister and you would both go for 10 cents a piece and buy popcorn? We would share that, and then we would... That was our favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. What else uh, do you remember... Uh, talking about your father and when he became mayor, what do you remember most about your father? I've got to tell you that when I, when he became mayor and the uh, and the councilman as well, uh, I was a young mother and three children to watch, and I was pretty busy with that. I do remember when he'd talk to me about things, but it wasn't one of my. I just wasn't aware of what was happening, except occasionally he would tell me about something that uh, we would discuss. But there was something else that we did that I was popular about. Oh, well, I don't remember all. This is one of James Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Roosevelt's son. My father was the... Uh, my father was the, his. What it says, uh, this is a uh, telegraph. Yes. From June 10th, 1949. Yes. And it says, I have made arrangements for the Southern California delegates to the Democratic National Convention to meet with the president during his visit to Southern California. The Northern delegates will meet with him during his stay in San Francisco. As a delegate from Southern California, you are invited to meet with the president at 2 p.m. sharp, Monday June, 14, uh, Monday, June 14th, Colonial Room Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. We must have a definite list of the delegates who will attend, and I will appreciate your letting me know by return wire whether or not you will be present. I urge every delegate to make the utmost effort to take advantage of this opportunity of talking with the president. Best regards, James Roosevelt, Room 930. Alexandria Hotel, and this was sent to 106 North Broadway, Redondo Beach, California, on um, on June tenth, nineteen forty nine. So your father was, was a democratic democratic. He was the Southern no. California uh, campaign chairman for Jimmy Roosevelt, and uh, he the, did not win, by the way. <laughs> you also, I also have a uh, Western Union telegram, April fourteenth, nineteen sixty seven. Uh, sent to the 315 Esplanade to the Elks Lodge and it says congratulations on your ter on your testimonial banquet tonight you and I are both 82 years old both hard-working Democrats and both give them hell best wishes always to a great leader Harry S. Truman they were born the same year and once on his return to Los Angeles my father knocked on his door and he got grabbed on either side of his either arm. And Truman opened the door and he says, well, come on in, Charlie. Mm -hmm. So he did know the president at that time. It was a delegation for the Democratic Convention. Mm -hmm. And did, did you ever get the opportunity to meet President Truman? No, I saw him, but not just to see his car go by. Now, you t told us a little bit of history when the Spruce Goose came down Pacific Coast Highway. Do you ever remember any famous people coming to Redondo Beach? 
that no. really impressed you? No, no, I do not. Uh, like I say, I was only 11 or 12 then, and I, I didn't remember them. I just was impressed by the size of the Graf Zeppelin. So that was the Graf Zeppelin? Yes, And it was. Um, how many years have you lived in Redondo Beach now? 75, maybe 76 now. And you now live in Hollywood Riviera. I How many houses have different houses have you lived in in Redondo Beach? Well, I was raised in Hollywood, uh, Hillside Manor, which was the small rentals, the summer rentals that we lived in. Uh, I also was 708 Pacific Coast Highway, which was a four unit that my husband and I ran. That was. Our, uh, he was in the post office, of course, for mm -hmm. 37 years. But I uh, can't remember what else we would do other than we moved into his mother's home for a couple of years because we wanted it empty so she would 